Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin. Ve sallallahu ala Muhammeden ve alihi tahirin. You remember we said that one of the proofs that uh, the prophets or the other demised imams or the deceased people they can hear us are the salams that we have to them. Assalamu alayki ya Rasulallah, assalamu alayki ya Aba Abdillah. In salat we say assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabiyyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So now a question is raised is that uh, no, salam, when we say salam in the daily life, this is a greeting. And uh, doesn't make sense to greet the Prophet. So salam that we have, like the salam in Quran, is a dua. So you are making a dua, and this dua is towards Allah. So you don't need to address the Prophet. So you are asking salam for the Prophet from Allah. As Allah says, salamun ala Ibrahim, salamun ala Nuh. When it comes to Quranic usages, we see that uh, salam means a kind of to be healthy, to be sound. Salah salamin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Qaf, verse 34. Ve salam. Enter with safety and immunity. Or for example, for Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah says, we told Ya Naru Kuni Bardan wa salaman ala Ibrahim. We said to the fire to be cool and safe for Ibrahim alayhi salam. Surat uh, Anbiya verse 69. So here you see that uh, salam means to be safe, to be in safety, to be in immunity, to be healthy. And sometimes salam is what we utter when we say salamun alaykum or salam to you. Like for example in Surat An'am verse 54 Allah says, وَإِذَا جَاءَكَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بَآيَاتَنَا فَقُلْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ When the believers come to you, tell them, address them saying, سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ Or for example, Surat Nur verse 61 فَإِذَا دَخَلْتُمْ بُيُوتًا فَسَلِّمُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ When you enter the houses, say salam to yourselves. Means to the people of the house, even if there is no one, uh, there is a hadith in Vasa'il al-Shia, that uh, volume 12, page 81, when, when you enter the house, say, As-salamu alayna min inda rabbina. Salam to us, salam from the side of Allah, from Allah. So it's okay even to say salam to yourself. And uh, this salam, uh, that is, uh, they say that it's greeting, even this salam is a dua. The salam that they say, so you cannot differentiate between salam which is dua and salam which is greeting, because even the salam which is greeting is dua. When we see each other, we say salam and alaykum, this is not like hello and hi in English, just to uh, uh, address a person. When we say salam and alaykum, it's a dua that we do for each other. Like what they had in the past in the English speaking culture, uh, in the past they used to, when they used to enter somewhere, they would say, uh, peace be upon you, peace be upon everyone. So it means that it's a dua. You're addressing people with the dua for them. So salam, which we use in our greetings is a dua. So we are asking salam from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that person. And uh, so we can ask this salam for ourselves, as Allah says in Quran, and the Hadith says, or we can ask for others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُسَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا Allah here is commanding believers to send salawat and also to do taslim and salam to the Prophet. Uh, there are uh, two points here. One is salawat and the other is salam. What is the difference between salawat and salam? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another place again in Surah Al-Ahzab says, هُوَ الَّذِي يُسَلِّي عَلَيْكُمْ وَمَلَائِكَتُهُ لِيُخْرِجَكُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ Allah and His angels send salawat, are constantly sending salawat to you, believers, لِيُخْرِجَكُمْ The function of salawat of Allah and the angels is that they take you out of darkness into light. So this is the impact of salawat. And here it says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُسَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِي 
Allah and the angels, they send salawat to the Prophet, so you also send salawat. Allah sent salawat, angels request Allah to send salawat to the Prophet. When it comes to us, we say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allah is commanding us, sallu alayhi. Commanded by Allah to send salawat to the Prophet. But we say, Allahumma salli, oh Allah, you send salawat to the Prophet. Even I cannot uh, uh, ask such a salawat to the Prophet. I, I am not in such a position to ask salawat for the Prophet. Even though I am commanded, I request Allah to send that salawat which is blessing to the Prophet. وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا Here where salawat and salam come together, salawat is asking that uh, peace for the Prophet uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and salam is to, to be submissive to the Prophet. As in another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, Oh Allah, O Prophet, they are not believers. Unless if they come to you when they have a dispute and to be pleased with whatever you decide for them and they are in full submission to you. So, salam to be in full submission to the Prophet. As we have a hadith uh, in Majma'ul Bayan, he says, As-salamu huwa taslimu fil umur. Salam means to be submissive to someone in the efforts. So, if we take this meaning, so when you say, As-salamu alayka ayyuhan nabi, you are addressing the Prophet saying that, I am in full submission to you. So whether we say salam is that health uh, and safety to say that Assalamu alayhi ayyuhan nabi. Alif lam is alif lam istighraq. It includes all kind of salam. The Quran uh, mentions that there are different salams to the prophets. Salamun ala Nuh, salamun ala Ibrahim. Salam, there are different salams on the prophets. So some of us they say this Assalam is alif lam istighraq means that all salams that are there for the prophets, all of them, all levels of uh, blessing of Allah and peace of Allah be upon the prophet. When you say, As-salamu alayki, ayyuhan nabi. So this salam to be upon the prophet, or to be that as-salam means a, a kind of submission from my side is coming towards you. Now the point is that if we say this salam, is the prophet is going to hear it or not? So the point is that you say assalamu alayka, you're talking to the Prophet, you're saying assalamu alayka. You didn't say assalamu ala Rasulullah. In salawat you say, in salawat you said, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. The Prophet is not the addressee. But here in salam you are addressing the Prophet. And in addressing the Prophet, what does it mean? You are not asking Allah when you say assalamu alayka, ayyuhan nabi. You're not addressing Allah to ask Allah. In Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, you're addressing Allah, asking salawat for the Prophet. But in As-Salamu Alayka, it's directly addressing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah said, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا اللَّهَ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ اللَّهُمُ الرَّسُولَ لَوَجَدُوا اللَّهَ تَوَّابًا رَحِيمًا Then they say, if you can ask for istighfar from the Prophet, so you also have to apply the next verse, in verse 65 of the very chapter Nisa. That when you have a dispute, go to the Prophet and ask him in your disputes. And the Prophet should answer you. So this is a misconception. This is a misconception and deception actually. If the Prophet is to answer you from Barzakh, how is he going to answer? He doesn't have a physical body. You have a physical body. So you hear something that is coming through the sound waves, <coughs> you have ear and you will he hear the voice and the sound which is coming through the waves. If there is no wave, if there is no frequency, then you will not hear it. So if we want to hear, we have to hear with our ears. And the Prophet in that realm of life, does he have a body? The physical body that is in this dunya? No. So even if he wants to speak to us, even if he wants to address us, that voice, we will not hear it, we will not understand it, because it is not coming through the physical way. If the Prophet hears us, he has to answer us.
So we say that if Allah hears you, He has to answer you. If Allah hears you, why He is not answering you? Why Allah sent the Prophet? Allah could talk to you Himself. If you expect that the Prophet from that realm of life to talk to you in a way that you hear it, so why, why shouldn't Allah do that? You believe in ghayb. Ghayb means that unseen. Unseen means that you will not see it, you will not hear it. So what is this logic to say that if the Prophet hears us, then he has to answer us and respond in a way that we hear him? Very strange. The point is that uh, doesn't make sense to say that the Prophet should, if, if the Prophet hears us, should answer us. Hearing uh, is not necessarily to answer. So if the Prophet hears us, we cannot expect necessarily to answer us in a physical sense that we can hear it by our ears. That's why Allah, in the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam addressing Sahaba when they asked that, when he, when he was talking to the uh, to the dead kuffar, they said that while you're talking to dead people, the Prophet said they are they, they hear better than you. But if they were allowed to speak, they would answer. But to speak in that sense, they have to have a physical body. And they don't have a physical body. Because they are in Barzakh. In Barzakh there is no physical body. So even if they speak, even if they answer, you're not going to hear it. So when you don't hear it, doesn't mean that they don't speak or they don't answer. But uh, when it comes to the Prophet and Imam Zalihim Salam, Answering the salams, we had a hadith. If you remember, we mentioned three hadiths in those uh, authentic hadiths that we said. One was from the Mazar Mufid, Kitab uh, al Mazar by Sheikh Mufid, volume two, uh, page 220. The other one was Kamal Ziyarat, uh, page 12, and the third also the same page. So, in those had three hadiths, uh, Imam alayhi salam said that, Innahu yasma'uka min qareeb. وَيَبْلُغُهُ أَنْكَ إِذَا كُنْتَ نَعِيَا or إِذَا يَبْلُغُهُ أَنْكَ مِنْ بَعِيد in different terming that when you are close to the imam's grave you say salam to the imam, imam hears you, the prophet hears you and when it is from distance then your salam will be delivered to the prophet and, there is, and it's interesting that even Ibn Taymiyyah didn't reject this and these people they go beyond Ibn Taymiyyah they are post Taymiyyah. So, if the Prophet answers you, you are not capable to hear it. If you want to hear the Salam of the Prophet, if you want to hear the voice of the Prophet, you have to open another eyes, you have to open another ears. And that is the spiritual ones. Malakuti eyes, Malakuti ears. When you open them, then you can see things that others cannot see, then you can see the answer of the Prophet coming to you. Anyhow, if the Prophet is about to answer you, whether he will have a dua for you, then you will receive this dua in your life. You will feel it in your life. Allah says, Salla alayhim inna salataka sakanun lahum, O Rasulullah. You send salawat upon the believers, your salawat is the cause of sakina, is the cause of peace on the hearts of the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, هُوَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ السَّكِينَةَ فِي قُلُوبِ الْمُؤْمَنِينَ Allah is the one who sends down sakina, composure in the heart of the believers. لَيَزْدَادُوا إِيمَانًا مَا إِيمَانًا Then to increase their iman. So sakina is iman. Sakina comes from Allah. But Allah can give it through the Prophet. صَلَّ عَلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ سَلَاتَكَ سَكَنٌ لَهُمْ You, O Prophet, you send salawat to them. This salawat of you is to increase their iman to give sakina, composure to their hearts. So that could be the response of the Prophet to you. But you don't understand it. If you have that eyes of Malakut open, the ears of Malakut open, then when the salawat, the light is coming from Rasulullah, you can, you can see it. Uh, if you had uh, knowledge of certainty, you could see the hell. 
Allah says that hell is around you. In this dunya, hell is there. But you cannot see that. لو تعلمون علم اليقين لتربون الجهيم ثم لتربونها عين اليقين Then you could see it by the eyes of certainty. This is in this dunya. In that realm of life, everybody will see the hell. You don't need عين uh, اليقين The eyes of certainty, you don't need to, to have it. In that realm of life, everybody will see it. لو تعلمون علم اليقين لترون الجحيم ثم لترونها عين اليقين علم اليقين أن عين اليقين علم اليقين is to be certain about something عين اليقين is to have certainty by seeing that we mentioned the example sometimes you see fire from distance you see the smoke you have certainty about fire you don't see the fire but you have the certainty about that Fire because you see the smoke. This is ilm ul yaqeen. Ayn ul yaqeen is to go closer and to see the fire. This is ayn ul yaqeen. And on the day of judgment is tasliyat ul jaheem. Allah says they will enter into fire. This is haqq ul yaqeen. And so, uh, then Allah says, if you had eyes of certainty, you could see the hell. Hell is around you, but you cannot see it. Why? Because you don't have those eyes of certainty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we, say, we gave this eyes to Ibrahim. وَكَذَلَكَ نُرِيَ إِبْرَاهِيمْ مَلَكُوتَ السَّمَاوَاتَ وَالْأَرْزِ We showed Ibrahim the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. And this showing him had lots of benefits to Ibrahim. وَلَيَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُقِنِينَ And one of them was to be among the مُقِنِينَ أَهْلُ الْيَغِينَ To have eyes of certainty. So if you have eyes like Ibrahim, then you can see Malakut, then you can see the Prophet answering you. So you shouldn't expect the Prophet to answer you from Barzakh the way that you can hear it by these physical material eyes, ears and eyes. You want that level of Salam to be received? Open another eyes, open another ears, then you will see it, then you will receive it. Rabbi Arani kayfa tuhiyal mawta. Ibrahim alayhi salam said, Rabbi, arani kayfa tuhiya al-mata. Allah, show me how you revive the dead. Ibrahim didn't say, Rabbi, arani ihya al-mata. Some of us said, they say, when he said, Rabbi, arani kayfa tuhiya al-mata, means, teach me how to revive the dead. And Allah told him. So he didn't just want to know the revival and to see the revival of the death. He wanted to learn how to do it himself. رب أرني كيف تحيل show me how you do it show me how you do it means I want to learn so some of us didn't believe that uh, Allah taught him how to revive the dead so this is a gift Allah giving to Ibrahim alayhi salam because of his uh, sacrifices and all the struggles he had in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah opens the eyes of Ibrahim alayhi salam to Malakut so Ibrahim can see, Ibrahim can hear so you want to see and hear that salam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that salam of the Prophet, you have to open another ears. So if, of course, you have eyes open, ears open, like Rasulullah, you can talk to the dead people. You can address them, you can talk to them. Like Ibrahim, you can see them alakut. Or the narrations that sometimes... Uh, the prophets or imams they talk to the dead people so if you have eyes of a certainty you have ears of certainty you can hear things that others cannot hear so barzakh is surrounding us let us understand it and how is the and the, what is the essence of this salam is he uh, when different people say salam to the prophet at one moment uh, whether they hear it or not these are the things that we don't know the quality of that realm of life so we cannot just refuse it by not understanding the rules of that realm of life. These are tawqifi. We have to uh, see that what sources are teaching us.